Is this thing working? Can you guys hear me in the back there? All right, good. Good, good. Wow, I got all kinds of toys back here. This is great. <laughs> Well, I always like to start off with some prayers, so let's, let's pray one more time. Lord God, we just continue to give this day to you, this service to you. We are just so blessed to be in your presence today. Father, I pray uh, that you just move me out of the way today and let your word speak for itself. Uh, let your word shine through. And uh, Father, we, just, uh, we are just so blessed to be with you and together here as a, uh, as a church family, Lord God. And I just feel so blessed to be here today. We give it in your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning. How's everybody doing today? Wonderful, wonderful. Um, I'm really excited to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me out. Um, today, I'm going to talk about something that I don't like to talk about ever. And uh, today, uh, this sermon is called From Behind the Shades. And uh, I'm going to talk about the power of confession. And so we're going to take a look at this word confess. And uh, this is a word that I don't like to talk about because it makes me uncomfortable. Is anybody uncomfortable with the word confess? Anybody? One, two, three, three, all right, four or five of you are uncomfortable. Everybody else was comfortable with it. Um, <laughs> but when you think about confess, what are, what, what are the connotations that come out from that when you, when you hear the word confess? Yeah, you got to admit something, don't you? Right? What else? You did something wrong. What, any, anybody else? Confess. Take responsibility. Absolutely. And uh, those, are, those are some, uh, just a few that you guys came up with. Now, we're going to look at uh, the actual definition of confess. And according to Webster's Dictionary, it says, to tell or make known as in something wrong or damaging to oneself. Or it also means to admit or to acknowledge sin to God or a priest. And the third definition of that is to declare faith in. Now let's hold that one right there for a second. Now this is from today's Webster's Dictionary. This isn't the, the one from way back. This is like an updated version. I found it really interesting that they still have in there, even though it's in parentheses, it's, it says to acknowledge sin to God or to a priest or to a pastor or, you know, to anybody really, or to declare faith in. Now that's something pretty powerful, is when you look at that word confess, you're thinking about what am I confessing, what am I sharing with people, what is that, what is that going to look like, that, that's a really really uncomfortable word. Let's look at the Greek form of this word. How many of you speak Greek? Awesome. Awesome. That's great. Um, the, the Greek word, if you can say it with me, it says homo logeo. Homo logeo. Hey, very good. You're speaking wonderful Greek, and if there's no Greek scholars, no one can tell me I'm pronouncing it wrong. So... <laughs> But that also means, it means to confess, acknowledge, agree, admit, declare. This can be a profession of allegiance, an admission of bad behavior, or an empathetic declaration of truth. Now, when you look at that, the Greek version, it's very similar to what we understand as confess, right? But it has more than just one meaning. It has several meanings to it. And the one that we look at the most, though, is when we're in trouble, when we've done something wrong. What, what, when you go to court, people are looking for a confession. They want the truth. They want that to come out. They want to understand it. So confess really isn't a pretty word, is it? It brings up all kinds of thoughts, things that are hidden, that are buried, no matter how, how we, hard we try to make ourselves look good, sometimes we would just rather hide that sin 
within us behind a pair of shades, right? I mean, when we're hiding behind the shades, next slide, please. <laughs> when we're hiding behind the shades, we, uh, we, we tend to, we, you know, for some, some of us, it feels safe. Like when you're up in front of a whole congregation of people, you've, well, you've met some of them, but you don't know any of them. And I've got, I've got one I know for sure because she goes to my church, but I won't, I won't try not to embarrass her too much. But it's easy to hide behind these because you can't tell if, if, I'm, if I'm looking over here or if actually my eyes are over here. It's, you, you really can't read what's going on behind these shades. Or we simply, you know, there are people, most people wear them. Why? Because it's sunny out. And we shade our eyes from the sun. Rachel, my dear sweet wife, would always tell me, take your shades off inside because it looked as though I was hiding something. You know, when somebody walks around, I, I used to, as a teenager, would walk around indoors like I would go anywhere because I just thought I looked cool to wear sunglasses wherever I went. And she's like, honey, you need to take those off. It looks like you're going to rob somebody or something. You, you, know, you, just, you just, you know take them off so people can see your eyes. I can't see your eyes, and that would just drive her nuts sometimes. But I obviously won't walk into a bank with these on because they, they do think you're hiding something or that you're going to rob them. <laughs> but sunglasses hide our eyes. And, our, and the eyes can actually tell you a lot about a person. There is something about eye contact in our culture that tells you that you have respect for the person you're talking to. That brings us, I want to I share this idea of hiding from the world. We often will hide from the world a lot of things because we're Christians. We're, we're supposed to have it all together. We're supposed to, you know, you... You're, you're supposed to live this persona that Jesus wanted you to live. You, you don't cuss and swear. You don't do this. You don't do that. And you follow all these rules. Um, sometimes when you're at a funeral, I just did a funeral less last week, and there was a lot of people with sunglasses on, and the shades can hide those tears. Now, for a guy, I know guys, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, ladies, but Ladies are a lot more open with their emotions than we guys can tend to be, unless you're me. I, I can probably ball on the drop of a dime, especially when Pastor Marsh starts talking about our foster kids. It's, it's, it's such a blessing. Um, but I'm sitting there, I'm going, I'm sitting there in the view going, I'm starting to cry, and i <laughs> got to get up here and speak. And Rachel goes, it's okay, you got your sunglass sermon. <laughs> <laughs> But it hides the hurt. It, it can hide our anger, maybe. And, you know, like I said before, there is something about us that we don't want the world to know. And when we do that, we, we hide so many things from people. Sometimes we bury them deep down inside. Sins, lies, failures. Weakness, insecurity. We start to feel safe behind those shades. Do we ever do that with our faith? Do we ever do that with our faith? Are we, are we afraid to share what God has given us? This beautiful, wonderful gift of salvation. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Matthew chapter 10. That's a beautiful sound. And I'm going to look at verses 32 and 33. And it says this. Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown before my Father in heaven. 
That's a pretty powerful verse, a couple verses there. I can actually say I got that from a movie, but it's actually God's word. If you, any of you have seen the movie God's Not Dead, um, the whole premise of that movie is hinged upon this particular couple verses. Where this young student stands up for his faith because he believes that God is real, that God created everything. And, he, and, and there are students out there in college today who have taken that real same stand. And have struggled. I know we've, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a youth pastor. I know we've got kids who are afraid to stand up for their faith in Jesus. Because of what people would think of them. They're afraid. And that's not a criticism of, of them. We're, we're often afraid. It's not easy to share your faith. It's not easy to wear that out on your sleeve all the time. In fact, we had an amazing discussion in, in uh, Sunday school this morning um, about our faith and about how we as Christians take a stand for our faith and how we live that out. It was incredible. I don't work in a factory anymore, but I, I know I... It, at one point I did, and it was, it was tough to, to be bold about it, but you, where, where do you take a stand? You know, where do you live that out? And he says, but he says, if you acknowledge me before man, I'm going to acknowledge you before my Father in heaven. Praise God. Next slide. We're, we're, I'm going to talk a little bit about David. You see, David, who knows David? David, he was the little guy. With the slingshot, right? He had he killed the giant, right? What else did he do? He what? Yeah, he with him play the fiddle. He what? He killed a man and married his wife. Wow, but but yet he was this guy, right? Named after God's own heart, right? He was a man after God's own heart. What, and it, I think it's safe to say that he was actually one of I Israel's greatest kings ever. David was their greatest king ever. And yet, he killed a guy, slept with his wife, had a kid, tried to cover it up, and he got himself into all kinds of trouble. David was also a poet. And he wrote this in Psalm 139. Verses 11 and 12, it says, If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light will become night all around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for even the darkness is as light to you. We can hide in the darkness in our life for only so long. Eventually, it starts to break us down. David got that. He knew that. In fact, when he, when he got caught in all this trouble that he got himself into, the first thing he did is he went back and he wrote about it. You know, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. He's like, oh, I messed up big. I messed up really big, and, and, and Lord, I need you to heal me. I, I can't do this without you. And I think that's the reason why David is known as a man after God's own heart. Because even though he sinned, <clears throat> he turned back to God. He confessed it. One, for one, one of his guys got right up in his face and said, hey, this is you. He says, you're the one who do all these things. And David's going, ugh. That's not good. Okay, he knows. So, Scripture calls us to confess. Right? Are we called to confess? Say that again. Absolutely. James also had something to say about that too. He says, Therefore, confess your sins to each other. And pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous man is powerful and effective. The prayer of power. So wait a minute. He says, 
confess to one another? Have you, I mean, do we do that? I don't know. I don't know what, what happens in this church, but do you guys confess your sins to one another? Because that's a little, that's a little, you know, that's where that word confess really gets uncomfortable. Because how many people do you know that you can trust to confess your sins to? And the silence is ever louder. It's true. It's hard. Why? Because that means people will know stuff about me. That means I might have to be honest about myself. I will have to reveal things about me that I don't want others to know. I might actually have to trust people. Wait, you know what? I don't know that I can handle that. I have to put the shades right back on because I don't want people to know that about me. That means we might actually have to be vulnerable. Being vulnerable. How easy is it for us to be vulnerable? It's not easy, is it? It's tough. Because you put yourself out there and you realize, oh yeah, I'm not perfect. Oh yeah, I do have a lot of stuff weighing on my heart. I do have a lot of junk. I do have a lot of sin that I wrestle with. I'll tell you what, it's really easy to stand up here and preach about that. But to live it out is tough. It takes it to a whole new realm. But in vulnerability, there is freedom. In vulnerability, there is freedom. And God, man, he loves us so much. He wants us to be free from the bondage of the sin that we wrestle with every day. That's why God is this personal God. It's not, he's not this faraway being that is waiting to strike us down every time we, we mess up. He's saying, come to me, you who are heavy laden. Take my yoke, because my burden's easy, and it's light. So that brings us to our, our, our you know, another idea that I want to share with you is, is that there is the, a freedom in confession. God wants us to be free in our relationship with him. I mean, if you look back to the Garden of Eden before the fall, Right? Go all the way back to Adam and Eve. Man, things were good. God created everything, and it was good. And then he, he created man, and he said, and then he created woman, and he says, it's really good. He did. He's, I mean, it's in there. Everything else that God created, he says, he created is good. He created is good. He creates people. It's really good. And that just is a, the beginning of God expressing his love for who and what he has created. He wants us to be real with him. He doesn't want us to hide our brokenness. He already knows everything about us, right? I mean, does, doesn't God know everything that we're going to do and what we've done or what we're thinking about doing? So then what's the point of confessing? Right? I mean, that's the first thought that came to my mind the first time I wrestled with this idea. Is what's the point? God already knows, right? But God wants us to take part in this relationship with him. A relationship isn't a one-way street. It's a two-way street. That where two people are coming together and they're working together to make it work. Richer for poorer, 
and sickness and health, no matter how hard it gets. God said, I want, I am so crazy about you that I want you to engage in this relationship with me. I love you that much. He wants us to be active in this. That is what confession boils down to. It's not just saying, I'm sorry, I feel bad, or I got caught, and then go back and do it again. Now, that doesn't mean I don't do that. I do that every day. I, I mess up every day. And I keep coming back. I'm like, Lord, I don't, know, I don't know why I can't let go of this except that I'm this broken human being who needs you desperately. It is about God wanting this love relationship with us. Romans 10, verse 9, it says, If we confess, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. So that takes that word confession to the realm of proclamation. If you proclaim Jesus is Lord and Savior, Amen. you will be saved be saved. Period. There's not, a, there's not a comma on that one. Period. I think John kind of echoes that. He says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and he will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Amen. All unrighteousness. Not just this one or this one or this. No. All unrighteousness. I love how the word confess has these, these different meanings. Because when you confess that and you release that, you are set free from that. And then you've got that freedom of salvation when you proclaim and ask Jesus into your heart. Do you see the freedom in this? Do you see it? Do you see how God wants us to be free from our sin? And how he desires for us to engage with him in that. To me, that's a beautiful thing. And that's a, that's a, that takes such a burden off of my shoulders when I'm actually grasping that. That doesn't mean that I don't go back and I'm like trying to do it on my own again. Because I do. I do. I try to do it all on my own because I think I should have it together by now, right? But no. God's saying, you don't have it all together. It's okay that you don't have it all together. Bring your junk to me. Bring it here. There's still consequences. There's always consequences for your decisions. But I still love you. You do not have to be burdened by the past. You do not have to be chained by the lies that Satan keeps whispering into our ears. We don't. We don't have to be burdened by that. We don't have to hide behind the shades anymore. Amen. The moment you ask Jesus into your heart, there is freedom. Just call out to him. Jesus is the name of our salvation. Praise God. Amen. He is the one that will help you break free of the burdens of your heart. Jesus is the lamb that roars like a lion. If you truly trust him with all of your being. Jesus will help you come out from behind the shades. And I don't know. I, I don't know this congregation, but I don't know if there's people who are just visiting this week or if, there's just a, if you've been brought by a friend or you've never done that before. But um, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have everybody just kind of close their eyes, and we're going to pray. And if you have not 
yet, accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, um, just repeat after me um, this prayer. And the congregation, if you'll just repeat after me too, just to encourage them um, as we pray. Let's just close our eyes. And if you haven't, you can, if you haven't accepted him yet and you want to, go ahead and just raise your hand while we're praying. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, and I need your grace. Come into my heart today that I may live for you each day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Sir. God bless you. Good word. Praise the Lord. How many of you enjoyed that? Yeah. Uh, Mark and Rachel, I'm going to have you go stand by the back door there so people can greet you. And by the way, don't walk off of my mic. <laughs> I was watching you. Let's stand together.